today we are talking about child custody fears. Um, I think this is uh, a feeling or a topic that comes up a lot because, you know, you get a divorce and, you know, if you don't have kids and you're just dividing property, I mean, not that money isn't important, you know, you need it to survive and all those things, but I always say like money is money, you can earn more, right? But your kids are like, for a lot of us, at least it was for me, they're, my kids are like my whole world, like the yeah. only thing that matters. <laughs> You have so much fear around that. And, you know, we talked, um, I think, in the the last episode or episode before, one of the last couple episodes about, like, um, you know, having that feeling of wanting your kids to like you more, <laughs> you know, and, and all that kind of thing. And so this, all these things kind of come together and you start being worried about what's going on in the other parent's home. You start being worried about what the impact to your kids is going to be. You have fear of possibly losing them. You have fear of, you know, the system uh, putting things on you that, you know, you don't agree with. There's just so many different ways that the fear comes into play in a child custody situation. True. It It's hard to control a, your child custody case. Uh, it, uh, I think we said something in the last episode about uh, uh, about me having to accept things that I cannot change, which is literally everything. Right. And 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 that's the way it is for a lot of people that you have uh, things that you can't control, like you know the the other parents drinking, for example, or drug use, or the other parents lacks uh, parenting or lack of commitment to education. You know, there's all kinds of things, uh, you know, even things that are, that would constitute child abuse. Uh, a lot of times the court's not going to do anything about them until the, until something bad happens. Something bad has to happen first, and then they'll take action. And that's that's so hard to say to people. Mm-hmm. It, it's so hard because, in a, <clears throat> I, I mean, obviously I'm a mom, and so I can only speak about this from a mom's point of view. I don't I don't know what it feels like to be dad, but but you know, as a mother, you know, we're obviously usually the more protective one. You know, we're the more coddling one. You know, men tend to be a little more you know, grr, rub some dirt in it and go on. And so as a mom, you know, from day one, your goal has been to protect your child, to keep them from harm, to keep them from being upset, to keep moms are more risk averse. Right. And and, and to do all these things. And now suddenly you're thrust into this position where you don't get to control that. Right. So they go off with dad for dad's parenting time. And you don't have any input. Right. And so, you know, what if they fall? What if they get sick? What if they right. don't brush their teeth and they end up with cavities? What if they stay up till midnight and they're so tired at school the next day they can't perform? What if they, you know, what if, uh, you know, dad feeds them nuts and they have an allergy, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like we hear so many different, you know, fears and, and, it's really hard to say to a parent or a mom in particular, well, I'm sorry, but until, you know, he is like you said, something bad happens, you yeah. really don't get to control those right. types of day-to-day functioning in the other parent's household. Right. I think a lot of people go into court and they're expecting the court to give orders based on, well, you know, he, or she used to, um, you know, uh, they, they had a, they had a, a drunk driving charge, uh, 10 years ago. Right. Yeah. You know, therefore they shouldn't be allowed to drive with the child. Right. Right. And the courts, in, uh, one of the court's large agendas is to ensure that the child has both parents in their lives. Uh, and, uh, with estranged parents in particular, 
there is a very strong reunification agenda. The court wants the, to reunify the estranged father from his daughter uh, almost at all cost. Right. And it's hard to go into to family court and argue, well, this child should just not see their father anymore. Uh, you know, if and, I, and I do have a lot of mothers that say, no, I, I think the kid would be better off if dad just wasn't in their life at all. Right. And, and that's a little that's a little shocking to hear a lot of times. It's mm -hmm. kind of like, I mean, I, you know, my ex-husband isn't my favorite person in the world and he's done a lot of hurtful things to me. But in in some ways, my children have really struggled in their relationship with him for the same reasons that I struggled in my relationship with him. But I don't think that my children would have been better off no. to him, for him to be null and void from their life. I mean, if they choose to do that as an adult for their own reasons or their own interaction or whatever, then that's up to them. Um, but I don't think that, um, you know, making that choice for them at such a young age would have uh, fostered anything except resentment towards me. The first thing you have to ask yourself, I think, is what are you reacting to? Uh, and I think that apropos of the title of this episode, most of the time what parents are reacting to is their own feelings. Right. It's their own fear. Uh, so you have to ask yourself, is the fear real? You know, because most of the time, and I would say over 90% of the time, it's false evidence appearing real. Right. It's something that you're afraid that's going to happen that's unlikely to happen. You know, to a certain extent, you have to trust God or the universe or right. whatever and and have faith to that your kid's going to be okay. Right. Uh, but number two, I think, and, and this is a really good way to approach fear, is to understand that... When you look at the world, you're really looking at it, you know, like a reflection on, on the cave wall. You know, it's like the light comes into the, the – you're in a cave, and the light comes into the entrance of the cave, and all you can really see are, are little figures that are – little shadows that are moving on the wall. That's about the extent of our, of our ability to perceive what's going on in that world. Right. And so when you see tattoos on people's necks and, you you know, maybe some coarse behavior or some weekend drinking, uh, you tend to, to see child abuse in every corner. Right. Uh, and that's the way the human mind works. Right. We have a certain amount of what we call a confirmation bias, which is right. a bias towards seeing things that we the, you know, seeing things that, that we already believe are there. Right. Uh, and you have to check that and realize that your perception is not reality. Right. A lot of times it's not. I mean, right. if you see a, a truck barreling down on you, then your perception probably is reality. Right. But if you're not in that world, you know, who knows whether the danger to that child is worth the risk of not having a father in his life. Right, or mother, yeah. Because when those kids become teenagers, you're going to be glad they have a father in their life. Right. You know, you're going to need somebody that's a bit bigger and stronger and scarier than, than you know, five foot two uh, little old mom. Yeah. Yeah, or you'll want, or even just, even if you're dad, you'll want them to have another house to go to <laughs> yeah. gives you a break once in a while. So I think the important thing to understand is just that, that you aren't going to be able to get orders out of the court based on your fears. Right. It has to be things that are actually happening. And this is why we talk to people about, you know, documentation, keeping track of parenting time, just keeping a log, you just get a spiral bound notebook and just write down little things that, mm -hmm. you know, happen that, you know, maybe even aren't terribly significant right now, but you never know in retrospect what's going to kind of, I find a lot of times when something is going on, there'll be all these little things that'll happen. And then suddenly there's some major incident that causes all of that to sort of fall into place and be like, oh, that was all leading up to this. Right. And I think once that happens, all those pieces can fall into place and be part of your evidence to the court. 
but they're the little day to day things are easy to forget, and you don't realize till after the fact that they were part of this bigger piece that happened. Right. So, and if you're acting out of fear, you're it backfires in right. court. You can, you can end up looking like uh yeah the problem, and it, so. Right. What you want to do is, yes, you want to keep records, you want to document, you want to keep track, but it's sort of like your own little private world of documentation. You know, don't use your communication apps for documentation purposes. That's not what they're for. You writing it down on a notebook is just as valid documentation as putting it in a in a messaging app in some way. But you want to um, keep track of what's going on, but you also have to try to... Um, you know, step back and let go of that control. Because what I always say is you got to give them enough rope to hang themselves. A, a lot of times we're doing just enough to keep things from falling apart. And, and we don't want it to fall apart because we worry about the impact on the kids and all that kind of thing. But if the other parent really um is has other ulterior motives or isn't doing this for the sake of the kids or whatever that will all become clear over time probably will yeah you know but you have to give it the chance to happen that's right that's yeah. right so all right so thanks for joining us uh if you are listening to the podcast please rate and review us wherever you're listening to us uh it helps us uh, and subscribe it helps us uh, get up in the rankings if you're watching us on youtube don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our channel so you get notified of new videos as they come out. And thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. We'll grow in number, fueled by the seed.